back to buzzing threads. As it's New Year, I thought this would be a good time to do some reflection. This is something I do quite frequently, pretty much after every quilt, I think about what I want to do next, how I want to develop. So I'm going to talk you through my process using a recent example of a quilt that I produced. So in the background you can see here I'm gradually creating a quilt. It's of a weasel. It's a quilt that I created at the end of last year for the uh, Midsummer Quilting. That's my local quilt shop, their 12 by 12 challenge that they do every year. Now this is a really good quilt to reflect on because it's one that I don't have anymore. It was auctioned off for charity as part of the challenge. So I no longer have it, but actually I'd quite like one of my own to put on my wall. So I'm going to have a go at recreating this at some point uh, during this year. So I'm going to reflect on how I can improve on it in the new version that I'm going to make. As you can see here, I'm piecing the quilt together. If you want to know more about the process, then check back up on my previous videos where I've gone through the whole process of which I make quilts. I'm pretty happy with the piecing process that you can see in the background here. I use tracing paper to make sure all my pieces are correctly positioned. I have only a really small overlap between the pieces, a couple of millimeters, so that there isn't too much bulk added to the quilt. Any small gaps that I end up with, I just fill in with thread. So that's all working pretty well. One improvement that I've made in the past year is really getting more organized before I start my piecing process. Getting all the pieces cut out before I sit down with my iron and then stick them all together in one go. And that has really made the process more efficient. So I'm gonna continue working like that this year. One thing that can make the piecing process quite tricky is small pieces. Now I think I got the balance right with this piece. There aren't too many small pieces, so it came together pretty well. And I want to kind of work in a similar way on future quilts. So my plan is to continue to not use two small pieces because I can always add little bits of colour using the thread when I get to that stage. So here you go, this is what it looked like once I'd done all my piecing. So now on to the thread painting. Now I found the thread painting of this quilt really slow and that's quite typical for when I'm doing thread painting. And I'm not really getting a lot quicker at the moment, but I think I need to accept that that is fine. I've only been really doing the kind of detailed thread painting for two or three years now. I don't produce a lot of quilts in a year, so I'm still relatively new to it, and hopefully it will slowly get faster. I think the thing that I found challenging for this piece was to do with the size of the quilt. It's actually quite a small quilt. And that made it really hard to find that right balance where I'm getting the detail that I want in the picture, but not losing that beautiful fabric. Ideally, I think for a piece like this, I could have done with doing it just a fraction bigger. Not a lot bigger, just a small bit bigger, and that would have made it easier to achieve a balance that I was happy with. So I think when I produce a new version of this weasel, that's what I'm going to aim to do. I'm going to make it just a little bit larger and then that should make the thread painting easier. So you can see me thread painting away in the background here. As I said previously, I've got other videos talking through the process, so I'm not going to go into detail now about what I'm doing. But when you see the finished piece, you'll understand there was a lot of thread painting to do, so it took a long time. Now there's a lot more I could talk about in terms of reflection because there's lots of different aspects of the quilt but I don't want to go on too long so I'm just going to talk about one final thing and that's the 3D element that I brought into this quilt that I was really pleased with how it turned out. 
Here you can see I am stitching the weasel onto its background. Onto the background I've put some grass, but on top of that, and I don't have any video footage of this, I also sewed on some free bits of grass that I'd produced separately. And hopefully in another video I'll talk through the process by which I did that. Now I was really pleased with how it turned out with this 3D element. I think that's kind of the difference between embroidery and art quilting is you've got that 3D element so it was really nice to just kind of bring that out a bit more with the grass. So here is the finished quilt. Unfortunately I didn't get a great picture of it before it went so this is all I've got but it does give you an idea of how it turned out. I really recommend doing as I have thinking about lessons learned and how to improve when you finish a piece of work. So that's it for this time. Thanks for watching. Bye!